I started using this Acer Asper light laptop for a couple of days. Now I'm going to share my unbiased review of this budget laptop. Do you know the price of this one? It's 26,000 rupees during the Amazon offers. I bought this during that time. Right now it is listed about 30,000 rupees. If you order this product during the offers time, you will get it for 26,000 rupees. In this video, I'm sharing how was this laptop for video editing, Photoshop, gaming, light tasks, typing experience and many more. First things first, like this video and also comment on the best feature for a laptop that you want in all windows. For me, I needed the same performance from the laptop with or without the charging, just like Apple MacBooks. Coming to the unboxing, in the box we get this laptop along with a charger and some instruction manual. This is a barrel type charger and no type C charging support is there. Also they provided one CD along with a microfiber cloth for cleaning the dust. There is no bag is provided in the box. After unboxing the laptop with a lot of excitement, I tried to turn it on but it didn't. I thought some issues was there but later I found that there was no juice in the battery. Then I plugged the charger and pressed the power button. Again, it didn't turn on. Later, I found that I need to press and hold the power button for some seconds to turn on this. Budget products works like this. Now it's powered on. Again, with the same excitement, I completed this setup of this laptop. Now let's talk about one by one of this Acer Asper Lite laptop. Starting with the processor, this laptop comes with an Intel Core i3-1215U series chipset. According to this processor specifications, this one can go up to 4.4 GHz of speed with Turbo Boost technology. This is helpful if you are using any high demanding applications. Yes, I checked the Premiere Pro, Photoshop and heavy graphic integrated games. I'll share those as well in this video. This processor comes with a total of 6 cores out of that 2 are performance cores and 4 are efficient cores. The base power of this processor is 15 watts. For maximum turbo performance, it's 55 watts. So to get the maximum performance from this laptop, you need to connect the charger and use it. Of course, in every Windows laptop, this is same. The maximum operating temperature of this chipset is 100 degrees Celsius. Apart from this, there are so many things you can observe about this chipset. I have given the link in the description box. Feel free to check if you want. I'm not going to share any Geekbench scores of this laptop because in real time usage, the performance changes and it doesn't matter when compared to these scores. So that's why I'm sharing my real day usage experience. Also, there is no dedicated graphic card available on this laptop. You only get UHD graphics. Coming to SSD and free space, this is a 512GB model. Out of 512GB, you will get 424GB free because some applications are pre-installed. Softwares are also added. That's why this much space we get. You get a Windows 11 lifetime support on this one. You can use all the Windows 11 gestures on this laptop. This is an NVMe SSD. If you want, you can expand up to one terabyte. You can use HDD or SSD to expand the storage. I checked how much speed this SSD is because if you are opening any applications or running software, the SSD speed matters a lot. If you are rendering a lot of videos from softwares, you need a faster SSD apart from RAM and chipset because it needs to process everything. If the SSD speeds are faster, then the rendering time is also faster. These are the SSD speed test results of this Acer laptop. This is more than enough to run applications on this laptop. Coming to the RAM, this model is having 8 GB. If in case you want, you can upgrade it up to 32 GB. This processor is supported and handles up to 64 GB of RAM and this is a DDR4 RAM. If you are multitasking for basic applications like Chrome, Excel, PowerPoint and Open File Manager, the RAM management is more than sufficient. Fun fact, two years back, I used my MSA gaming laptop with 8 GB of RAM for more than a year. I did video editing, used After Effects, Photoshop, Autodesk software, and more with that 8 GB of RAM. Later, I upgraded to 32 GB. When it comes to this laptop, the RAM management is not a problem. It handles pretty well for basic tasks. One of the good things about the Windows laptops is the ports. Previously, I used a MacBook for some days. The ports on MacBook are not even close to Windows. On this Acer Asper Lite laptop, you get plenty of ports. 
Come to the ports on the left one Kensington lock followed by one LAN port, a micro SD card reader, a USB 3.0 port, a normal USB port, a SIM card slot, yes a SIM card slot and a 3.5 headphone jack. On the right a USB type C for data transferring followed by one more USB 3.0 supported slot, one HDMI port and a power port. So there are plenty of ports available on this laptop. Come to the display, this one comes with a 15.6 inch full HD 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. The bezels are there all over the screen but thicker on the bottom area. This is a 1920 by 1080 panel and is supported for a maximum 60 hertz screen refresh rate. This is a 32 bit panel. You can open the display all the way up to 180 degrees. Coming to the viewing angles, they are distracting if you move side or if you place the laptop on center. This is an anti-glare display. Yes, it works. Uh, talking about the light leaks, unlike all other, this one is also having that. LCD panels have this by default. Next, when it comes to the display flex, yes, it is there. While testing this display flex, I observed that some wave type motion on the display. The screen wobbling is also there. While doing this also, I noticed wave type motion on the display. So yeah, don't think this is a great display, but for this price, it is great. If you have any external monitors, then the display is not a big problem for you. If you want, you can enable or disable the nightlight as well to protect your eyes from blue light. When it comes to my experience in daily usage, I didn't face any problem with this display most of the time. If I use by sitting in front of it and don't move sides, there is no problem with the viewing angles as well. I used this most of the time in indoor conditions and I didn't feel any issues with the brightness. I didn't find any exact information about this laptop display in terms of brightness needs. As per my experience, it is supported for 300 nits. Even I watched the 4K YouTube videos, for multimedia usage, the display is good. So apart from display flex and viewing angle distraction, the display is very good for this price. Now talking about the keyboard, this is a full size keyboard, we get a side number pad too. The keyboard flex is very minimal, this thing I didn't expect for this price. I don't know which type of keyboard it is, but the key travel is good. It feels smooth and good. Also, it gives good tactile while pressing the keys. Sadly, this is not a backlit keyboard. So if in case you are working in dark or no light situations, it's really hard to type unless you are a pro typer. I typed video scripts with this keyboard. The typing experience I'm having is really good. I feel that click on every button I'm pressing. So overall, in short and sweet, this keyboard is good for typing and everyday use. On the top of the keyboard, you get two indicators with light. One is for caps lock and another one for number pad. Also look at the design of the keyboard outline. There is no point going fingers off from the keyboard. If you look at my gaming laptop, you notice the differences. Now let's talk about the touchpad. This is a normal touchpad unlike all others. Quality is nice. Previously, I used a Dell G3 laptop some years back. The main problem with this type of touchpads is if we use it for a longer time, like some months or years, it ruins. We get two buttons. One is on left side bottom and another one on right side bottom. If in case you want to select anything, just tap once on the area above the buttons. You don't feel any click, but it takes your input. Also, you will get all gesture support with this trackpad. Overall, the trackpad is decent and good, but not premium. This laptop comes with two speakers on the back bottom side. The sound quality that is coming from these speakers is amazing. I still remember when I played the first video on the laptop right after unboxing, I was searching for the speakers where they are because the sound quality is that much good. If you are using these speakers in indoor conditions and watching any movies or series, you don't need to connect with external speakers. These are more than enough. I don't know how many watts does these speakers are, but the sound quality that is coming from these speakers is great. Now let's talk about this laptop body. This laptop is made up of metal on the top side and the back is made up of plastic. You can observe the air vents on the back side with a single fan. Also, there are four rubber grips on each corner that not only provides the grip, but also they provide some space for the bottom side, which helps for air intake. The hinge is decent, but not very high quality. You need both hands to open this laptop. 
How do the weight? This one weighs just 1.59 kilograms, even though it comes with a big 15.6 inch screen. As I shared earlier, the screen wobbling is there and the display flex is also there. The design looks premium and no one can judge what is the price of this one. You can easily carry this laptop in your bag. This Acer Asper Lite comes with a 720p HD camera along with dual microphones. I'll share the video samples in a bit but before that let's talk about some more things about this camera. You can enable or disable this camera by pressing the function button and F10 key because this one doesn't have any physical privacy shutter for the camera. Next thing whenever the camera is turned on you can see the light side of that. This is a good thing because you know whether the camera is running or not. It is a good privacy. Now let's have a look at the video samples and my quality from this camera. Hey guys, this is the video recording from this uh, camera and uh, you can judge how the audio quality as well. I didn't edit anything of that and I'm going to post uh, raw whatever the audio and video directly coming from this camera. Um, as per my knowledge, if you're having great lighting, it is pretty decent. You can go for calls as well. But if in case you have very dull lightings, it won't gives a best output from this. Right now, like in my studio setup, I'm having good lighting conditions and I can control the lights with full. So that's why the video is looking pretty decent when compared to US. So, and also you can judge the audio as well. So if I move forward and talk, so you can observe how it is. If I come a little closer, you can uh, judge how the audio is going back going front going back now tell me what do you think about the quality of this camera i can say that this camera is not at all useful for online meetings or even casual talks if in case you have very dull lighting just for appearance it is okay come to the charging you get a 45 watts charger in the box i didn't tested the charging time exactly that this laptop took to charge from 0 percent to 100 percent during my testing, sometimes I use a charger, sometimes I didn't. When it comes to carrying this charger, yes, it is, you can easily carry it. It's not as heavy as the gaming chargers. Even though this laptop comes with a type C slot, you cannot charge the laptop with that. You need the cylindrical barrel type charger to charge this. On average, it takes one hour to one hour 45 minutes to charge completely from 0% to 100% in power of condition it's just a guess guys like i said before i didn't test this part let me know in the comments if anyone is using and watching this video talking about the battery this one comes with a 36 watt hour battery the battery backup is mixed in my usage if i use very light tasks like using chrome typing the script watching youtube videos movies etc it lasts me more than four hours straight without charging and that too the brightness level somewhere close to 40 to 50 percent on the flip side if i use heavy softwares like photoshop premiere pro or gaming of course this is not recommended on this laptop but if you use this hardly less than one hour you will get the battery backup these u series chipsets are good for handling normal day-to-day -day tasks so the battery for normal task is amazing if you are a user who uses this laptop mainly focused on multimedia online meetings webinars classes script typing or anything typing etc then you don't have to worry about the battery you will get in between four to six hours sometimes more than that also it depends on the type of applications you are using in short and sweet for normal tasks this battery is good on the flip side if you are using it at extreme levels with 100 percent brightness you will get one to two hours of battery backup time now talking about the everyday performance as i shared earlier if you use this for basic things like web browsing typing powerpoint online classes meetings the performance is good ram management is good the ssd is fast to open any applications so yeah this one is great for doing that stuff and it handles very smoothly Talking about my video editing experience on this laptop, if I edit 1080p videos, not 4K, 1080p videos, that too, two layers of videos with no effects, nothing, it can handle. If in case I add any effects to this, even though it is 1080p or 720p footage, it struggles and you notice a lot of heating as well. I don't recommend video editing on this machine, but sometimes it's okay 
to do vlog type style editing right after video editing i try to play a game on this one and the results are as expected i downloaded the steam application and played euro truck simulator 2 if i keep the graphic settings very low like the baseline the gaming is good without any lags or frame drops but you miss the clarity and sharpness in the game on the other side if you increase the graphic settings to highest or ultra you see frame drops for every second i'm not saying you cannot play games on this laptop you can play but not heavy graphic integrated games like this now talking about the photoshop experience this works almost better than video editing and gaming if in case you do any thumbnail work you can do it it can handle up to 10 layers with ease and sometimes little lags i noticed for light photoshop editing it works you can use that there is no problem with that now let's talk about the good and bad things i noticed in my usage starting with the good things number one is the price if you give this laptop to any random person nearby and if you ask to guess the price they will say it is more than 30 or 40 thousand rupees number two is the ports you will get all necessary ports on this laptop you don't need any fancy adapters for extra ports number three sim card support is there yes sim card support is there i didn't test this but slot is there this thing i never expected in future i'll try to make a video of how it works with the sim card number four lightweight and design looks premium number five the chipset this chipset handles all day-to-day -day tasks with ease number six the battery life is good for normal usage if you use for watching movies like multimedia type or doing any basic works like typing chrome using it's really good number seven i don't know whether this point fits in this pros or cons section it's like 50 50 guys that's why i'm sharing it here it's about the display maybe the displays i work with have the highest quality that's why for me this is looking not great but yeah for this price the display is good but sometimes it feels not Number eight is future proof. You can expand the storage or RAM in the future if in case you want. Number nine, the speaker sound is good and I didn't expect this much loud. Number 10, the battery standby time is amazing. I kept this laptop in sleep mode for entire night. Only 4% of the battery dropped. Now let's talk about the bad things that I noticed. Number one is there is no light for the keyboard. I mean, this is not a backlit keyboard. If you are working in dark environments, then take care. Number two, this screen is only supported for 60 hertz. Number three, the camera quality is absolutely not good. Number four, even though this one comes with a type C slot, it is not supported for charging. So you need to carry this charger with you every time. Number five, the viewing angles are not good for the display. Number six, the screen wobbling is there. Number seven, there is no dedicated switch for the fan. It automatically turns on and off depending on the heat of the laptop. Number eight, you won't get much control of this laptop. Like in other laptops, you get a control center to change the performance modes. But in this one, nothing. Now it's time to wrap up this video by answering for one question. That is for whom this laptop is best. This is good for those who are looking for a budget laptop for basic work that includes browsing the internet for multimedia attending calls online classes typing etc also i will tell for whom this is not good for the people who are planning to use this for video editing gaming or heavy task related applications this is not good overall this is a notebook type of laptop where day-to-day -day tasks run smoothly on this one that's the review of this Acer Asperlite laptop guys. I'll see you in another video. Let me know if you have any doubts regarding this laptop. I'll reply to every comment. See you again in another video.